You know what time I think it is? I think it's time for a little peace. And you're like, what? Yeah, a little peace sign. So we're gonna make a little peace sign out of aluminum. This was casted using a sand cast mold. And uh, we'll go from there. A few interesting things about the peace sign is it's not what some Christians think it is. Some Christians think it's the cross with the broken arms and then it turned upside down and it's an evil, evil satanic symbol. It's not. It was actually made in 1950 by Gerald Holton. Gerald Holton's like, man, this nuclear stuff's getting out of control. So anyway, he's like, he's an artist, a designer, and he's like, I'm gonna make something with an N and a D and it's going to represent nuclear disarmament. So he made this with an N and a D in it. Can you, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, neither, neither, neither can I. And as what that is, it's actually flag symbols. Like the guys you see in the movies on a ship with the flags. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that so we all can understand a little better how there's an N and a D in the peace sign. All right. Since I got the budget of a Marvel movie for making these videos, I made myself some little blue tape popsicle stick flags. <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's show how this works, okay? So the bottom of the peace sign is an N, which a person would use flags on a ship for the end like that. That's an N. Whoa, man. Straight arms and down. And then the D straight like that and that's how you get the center that's how you get the center of it so that is how the peace sign originated hey so i'd like to talk about the sand that's used for sand casting uh, this stuff i got from amazon and and it's gray and so they call it green sand and all of the green sand means is that it'll actually have a little bit of moisture content in it and that's what gives its ability to stick together and if you notice i can squeeze it and not too much will stick to my hand, but it will stay together in a clump and have an even break, which is real important to making these molds. Um, you know, after you get done using it, it'll dry it out, and then you can just put a little bit more water back into it with a squirt bottle, stir it up, and you're all good to go again. So, um, stuff works pretty good. I haven't tried Petrobond, but green sand seems to be A-OK -okay so far. If it's too wet, it actually creates steam and we'll totally mess your part up. But there you go, green sand. So on this next part, I'll just go ahead and uh, narrate it because when I recorded it, I was leaning forward and it sounds like I'm having a Big Mac attack and I ate about four hamburgers. Um, right now I'm like putting um, dust on the part, uh, baby powder on the part, so it won't stick to the sand. Now I'm screening the sand so the smallest parts will actually go and make a good surface. Um, finish onto the part. Um, if you use clumps from the sand, uh, you may have a little bit of voids and stuff, which will cause falls on your cavity. Here, the sand's already packed down a little bit. I'm just adding more sand in. Uh, now I'm just scraping it off. I use a sawing action. Here's the, here's the part that I just packed with sand upside down, flipping it over. You can see the pattern in there, and I'm just putting the parting powder in there. Now I'm putting the uh, the sprue in right there. I'm locking the sprue into the 3D printed part and there's the spin trap. So that way when the uh, aluminum is poured in there, it'll go past the pattern and into the spin trap to collect uh, the first little bit of contaminants and sand that may have fell down in there. i um, screening it again so I have a good finish on my parts. Um, probably not necessary on the back side, but it, it still comes out looking nice. Um, again, right here, I'm sawing it off uh, and flattening the back out um, with the sand. Uh, here we go, I'm lifting it apart and we're gonna start removing the patterns on this and I'm gonna remove the, the peace sign out. Um, luckily, the peace sign just falls out. Uh, it has really nice edges on it so it doesn't grab and it can just fall right out. Um, now I'm digging trenches into the back side of it. Uh, I'm gonna mill it off so I don't really care uh, how much aluminum is on the back of it, I'll just put it on the mill and, and, and cut it down. So I'm just making a little bit bigger channels for the aluminum to follow through. Um, so that way I can make sure the part gets filled out properly. I don't want the part to come up short with aluminum and uh, not fill out all the way. And so now this is a uh, TIG rod that I have. I think it's about an eighth inch in diameter. 
and uh, I'm gonna poke a bunch of little holes in it and like I said I don't care for the backside because I'm gonna I want to clean it off but I do want to be able to get any steam or any trapped air out of there so I'm just using a little rod to um, poke holes and uh, clear that out so as the aluminum fills in there the air can be uh, displaced and pushed out through the holes um, I put a lot of them in there I don't care here's the spin trapped so that way the aluminum can easily flow in there and the air can um, escape out the other side of it okay just lifting it up shaking it out blowing off a few bits of the sand inspecting it I wish I had my compressor on it would have been a lot nicer than closing my eyes and blowing on the sand um, this right here I'm installing a little tiny basin uh, that's going to lead to the sprue and that little basin is going to be a little pouring place so that way when I pour the aluminum in there it will go ahead and uh, create all the turbulence in the little basin and then overflow into the little into the little sprue right there and uh, amazingly it, it works I mean I think it works really well the other thing that's amazing is you can pour a lot of aluminum down that little sprue I think it's about uh, my sprue I think is around on average of a nine millimeter diameter it starts off large at the top and goes down small it goes down smaller and that's so that way it doesn't pull down air with it and cause uh, air inclusions or, or voids in, in, in your part when you're casting it so here uh, just doing final inspection blowing some leftover sand out of it uh, this is where you hope you don't have any sand that accidentally falls into the cavity of your mold and causes a problem um, I'm holding it up just a little bit until I can find the location of the center pin of the uh, lock pins to put in the sides. Um, I got to find a different mechanism. The wood kind of not so great. It swells up sometimes and then it makes the pins hard to put in. Then you have to take a drill bit and ream it out, back out. But um, yeah, that'll be another box, you know, learning experiences. And so here it is. It's done, ready to go. see how this thing ended up let's pull the pins and open it up and see how well it did I think it went okay it used up about as much as aluminum as the other one I did and uh, there's no leaks out the sides or anything I think it's still relatively hot so I'm gonna wear gloves and bust it open and let's see what we got oh. Wow how about that looks like we got another good casting so um, get some of this out of there Stuff is really hot still. Go ahead and push this part out. It fell out really easy. Yeah, look at all that steam coming off of it. Yep. All right, here we go. Break the. Oh, yeah. That one I think came out even better than the previous one. Yep, look at the vent holes. You can see the, see the vent holes that came out there. bust off some pieces most of that sand looks reusable any anything that has anything that has really really black char on it I'm probably gonna scrape off and then that's good it's gonna go in the trash yeah anything like that um, this mold here where the aluminum made direct content uh, contact same thing um, that's gonna go in the trash you know you don't want you don't want that stuff interfering Let's go ahead and bust this off and then you can see what I previously talking about with the uh, sprue setup and everything like that. So here we go. Look at that. That is awesome. Look at all the little air holes that I made and the aluminum flowed right up through there. Aluminum fl uh, flowed right up through the air hole for the sprue. Went in there real nicely, followed some of the paths to get there. Like I said, I don't really care about the back. We'll go ahead and clean that up on the mill. We'll clean this up on the mill. I get it all nice and flat like the other one. And then of course you can tell that's where some of the sand fell out when that when the part came out. And again, I don't I don't really mind because we're just gonna put that right up on the sand on the belt sander and clean that off. So after this cools off and becomes somewhat able to uh, 
handle, we'll go ahead and uh, finish that up. Hey, if you like what we casted today and what we did and the things you saw, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Click like and hopefully uh, I'll get another one done soon for you. Take care.